speaker of the session. Um, okay, so the title of my talk is uh, Impulse Controls and Proper Extensions of Optimal Control Problems. It's a joint work with Franco Rampazzo and Monica Mota from the University of Padova in Italy. So in this talk, I will talk about this uh, control system that is written here that it's, uh, it's not the standard control system since it has uh, this part, this standard part with the dynamics F and this part that we call impulsive part where the control U, we have two controls here, U and V, where the control U appears with it, its derivative and is multiplied by um, vector fields that depend on the state X. Okay, here X is a uh, function from 0t to rn, u from 0t to rm with values in the set u, capital U, and v from 0t to rl with values in the set v. So, first I will present a concept of solution for this kind of system in the case where we take u as a function that is not uh, regular enough when we take a function u that is not absolutely continuous, as soon as it is not absolutely continuous, this uh, equation doesn't have a classical definition of solution. In particular, I will present a concept of solutions for inputs u that are in L1. This calligraphical L1 means the set of uh, Lebesgue integrable functions defined pointwise everywhere. It doesn't mean the set of uh, the classes of equivalence. So we have two notations, this calligraphical L1 for the uh, set of functions defined everywhere and the classical uh, straight L for the set of equi uh, the classes of equivalence. So why do we have to make this difference? Because uh, in this uh, kind of system that we call an impulsive system, this function, for example, if we take a function that is zero on the whole interval, zero t, this is function u, and then we take another one where we change the value at the last point, okay, this is u tilde. These are different for my equation because if I introduce this function in this equation, the state will jump at the end. If I introduce this function, it will not jump. So we have to be, uh, make a difference point-wise, okay? So I will present the notion of limit solution that is defined for L1 inputs U. Here, V is a standard control in L infinity. And this concept of solution subsumes former concepts of solution that were normally used for this impulsive control system. And after that, I will investigate whether, this, uh, whether associated minimum problems to these equations are proper extensions of regular problems, regular optimal control problems with absolutely continuous controls U and con absolutely continuous trajectories. So, as I said before, when U is absolutely continuous, in the equation, we have a classical equation because this is an L1, okay? And the system is uh, standard and the solution is interpreted in the classical sense of Carré theory. So we will use this to give uh, the limit, uh, the concept of limit solution. Another thing that we took into account when giving this concept of solution is that uh, these impulsive trajectories, what we in the literature is called impulsive trajectories, should be limits of trajectories with, uh, of uh, regular trajectories, of, traje of absolutely continuous trajectories and when they, are the, when they have a discontinuity, it's because they are limits of trajectories with increasing and unbounding derivatives. So there is a jump in the limit, okay? So in the literature of impulsive control systems, there are some things that are already well known. So the first thing is that we cannot give a notion of solution in the distributional sense. That is the first time one person will think uh, to do because you have a derivative of a function that is not absolutely continuous, okay, you think of distributions. But it's not uh, correct since the system is nonlinear in u dot. So if it's not linear in u dot, we cannot define, we cannot define the, 
this was the, the, the multiplication because uh, also x, will, this part will be not regular enough to define this product in the sense of distributions. To multiply distribution, we need on this side something regular. And this is as regular as u. And the other important thing is that the Lie brackets of the vector fields are important. So remember we had this question, this, the system was x dot equal to f t x u v plus the sum. Okay, we have m vector fields, chi alpha here that, that uh, determine the impulsive part. So why are the Lie brackets important? Because they will determine whether this, this system of equation has one or multiple solutions. It, it depends, the uniqueness depends on the Lie brackets. So intuitively we can think that uh, if we have uh, this simple system, let's just consider only two controls, okay, and no drift, so this part doesn't exist. And um, two controls that are equal. Let us put uh, they are zero until a certain point, and then they jump. Okay, yes, so they are both equal, and now they jump, and they are zero before. So the idea is that uh, to compute, if we, we compute the state until this point, this is the left limit, and then we want to see where the state goes after tau. So there are two ways of computing, because when, when there is a jump, the idea of this uh, differential equation is that we follow, when, when we follow only these dynamics, okay? So if we are here, we can go following one vector field, this is the exponential mapping, following this vector field, starting at this point, okay? We can follow this vector field, and then the other one, Okay, or we can start on this point, follow the first, the second vector field, and then the first one. So these points, this value will be equal if and only if the Lie bracket is zero. So if the Lie bracket is zero, we can go to different points applying the same vector fields. Okay, this is an intuitive idea of what happens. Then, so, an established and good notion of solution already exists in two cases. The first case is the commutative case where all the Lie brackets vanish. In that case, one can use the flow box theorem. The flow box theorem says that there exists a change of coordinates. There exists a system of coordinates where all these vector fields are constant. So we transform all the coordinates, we work on this new system, and we obtain a differential equation where the coefficients here are constant. If they are constant, it is easy to define a solution, we only integrate, okay? So in that case, using the flow box theorem, we can give a notion of solution, and the notion of solution is given via density of AC functions in L1. It means that a solution here, we will, see, we will say that a solution X is a solution of this system if and only if it is the limit of regular solutions, okay? So some people that work on this uh, subject well, are here. Then, when the system is non-commutative, there is a big literature of uh, systems where u is not any function in L1, but is a function of bounded variation. In this case, there is a con an existing concept that is called graph completion. Graph completion is a tool that one uses to define, give, no give a notion of solution to this system. The idea is that if one has a function that has jumps, the idea is that we use a, another function that is Lipschitz continuous that is obtained by bridging the jumps of u, okay? So many people work on this assumption. Some of them, I mean, are in the public, okay? Um, so let's see. 
I will explain, I will give the notion of graph completion later. So the idea of these limit solutions is first that uh, they are consistent with the notion of category solution when the control is regular, so it's like an extension. Then the solutions are single valued everywhere. The graph completion solutions are, have a version that are set valued. These are single valued everywhere. They allow us to prove some existence and, and uniqueness results. And we can prove a result of equivalence with the previous concept of graph completion solutions. OK? So let's give the definition. So given this uh, Cauchy problem, Cauchy impulsive problem, and uh, a value, initial value, and u in calligraphical L1 and v in L straight L1, we will say that x, a function x from 0 t to rn is a limit solution if uh, for every time in the interval there exists a sequence u k tau of absolutely continuous controls such that we have the following. For the character solutions that exist because u tau k, tau k are uh, absolutely continuous, we have that di this, limit, this limit holds. So, on one side, both the, the solutions and the control approximate the solution and the control in L1, and on the other side, they approximate it in tau, in the point tau, and we need this, this for every tau. So why do we need for every tau? Again, the same example here of U tilde, it's, uh, it's clear to explain why, because we need to somehow, when we approximate with absolutely continuous, uh, controls, we have to uh, illustrate this behavior because we want x to jump at this point, so we, we need to approximate u tilde pointwise in this point. Okay? It does a, an approximation in L1 is not sufficient. Okay? So, sometimes we need for each uh, tau a sequence, a different sequence of u. We, I will show an example. But sometimes we have other more simple solutions that we call simple limit solutions where this uh, sequence can be independent of tau. And there is another type of limit solutions in which not only the sequence is independent of tau, but it can be taken to, be, to have equivalent variation. And these this are the limit solutions that we can show that are equivalent of the graph to the graph completion solutions. So, an example here that uh, Susma and you presented some years ago. So we have two vector fields and we consider this system. These two vector fields not, that, that, that do not commute. The Lie bracket is not zero. We start from zero. And it's easy to see that if we consider the control U equal to zero everywhere, the characteristic solution XC is zero everywhere. But if we approximate this control by this controls UK, we obtain a sequence XK of characteristic solutions. And when we go to the limit, both UK and XK go to this limit. UK goes to zero, okay, so that's uh, fine. It goes to zero uniformly, so it's even more than we ask in the definition, in the first definition. And XK goes in L1 and pointwise to this function. Uh, uniformly, uh, and uniformly <laughs> in particular. So, this x will be a limit solution, okay, by the definition, but it does not coincide with the character resolution. So, we have this example where both u and x are absolutely continuous, but x is not the, the character resolution. So, it is a simple limit solution, but it's, we will see, but it's, it's that this is a simple limit solution, but it's not the BV simple limit solution. Because when we allow, when we allow the variation of the control go to infinity, we can create solutions that are not the characteristic ones. That, that's the idea. And again, as I, as I explained intuitively here, we can see that in this case, where the vector fields do not commute, there is a lack of uniqueness. For the same control, we have more than one limit solution the characteristic one and this one in this case. Okay, this is another example. This is the simplest nonlinear system that we can consider. And it is very easy to prove that if we define the map X uh, in this way, this is 
each with a difference. This is the unique limit solution. But uh, if we consider u to be the Dirichlet function in the interval 0, 1, there is no way of uh, finding a only one sequence, sequence uk converging to this Dirichlet function, both in L1 and pointwise everywhere. So this example shows the need of giving independent sequences that are dependent of the time. Because here we need sequences, we, we cannot do everything with one sequence. So this limit solution is not simple, it's only a limit solution. Okay, so there are some results for the commutative case. First, as I said before, we can characterize uh, the, the, the limit solutions as solutions of a system through a change of coordinates that is uh, much simpler. So thanks to this change of coordinates, we can also prove existence and, and uniqueness and continuous dependence with respect to the, to the data. The continuous dependence is in L1 with respect to U, even if the derivative appears in the, in the equation. And of course, if, since we have ex uh, uniqueness, we have consistency. So if U is uh, absolutely continuous, the character solution coincides with the unique limit solution. Then, what I said about graph completion. So in the non-commutative case, um, there is this technique of graph completion. So the idea is to take a control that is not regular and make it regular somehow, introduce it in, a, in a, an equation that has a relation with the original equation, and uh, obtain a, um, a solution from there. So a simple example, imagine we have this control U that has a jump here in tau. So now the graph completion of U will be given by a pair of functions, phi zero phi from zero t to zero one u. So this phi zero to zero t zero one will be a reparameterization of time. And phi will be the new control. So the idea is that when the control jumps, we stop time and we use that time to complete the graph in a continuous and Lipschitz way. Okay, so we obtain this phi. And there are many ways of completing the graph. This one is one, and the dotted line will be another one. So we have, uh, normally we have an infinite quantity of graph completion for each non-continuous control. And even for the continuous control, if we want, we can stop the time and make a loop, okay? So, as I said, before one bridges the jumps of u and parameterize them on s sub intervals, so then s will be the new time variable where the time is constant. Right. So this is the what I said before written in equations. It's not necessary to repeat. So this is the new system that for us is called space-time system. It's the same as before, but we add a, a, a variable for the time. Okay. So. Now, what is a set value graph completion solution will be a, a map X that is normally set value that is defined as the composition of E and the inverse of the time. So E will, Y, sorry, Y will be a solution of the space-time system and this will be the inverse of the time. So normally the inverse of the time, as in the example, is a set value map. So this composition is a set value map. But we will work only uh, with single value graph completion solutions in which we take a right inverse of phi zero that is single valued and we define x in this way. So what we can, could prove uh, in, for graph completion solutions is the following theorem is that given an initial value and controls u with bounded variation and control v in L1, X will be a BV simple limit solution if and only if it is a single value graph completion solution. So there is an equivalence. So um, here we can see that we, in order to have uh, a necessary condition to have a graph completion associated to a control is that the control is of bounded variation. If not, we cannot complete the graph in finite time. I think that's geometrically clear. Then we have an, an existence uh, result. 
So this is the existing result. If you, that is the set of uh, values, has the Whitney property, then for every initial value, for every u in BV and V in L1, there exists a BV simple limit solution. So what is uh, set with the Whitney property is defined here. It's a set where we can control the geodesic distance by the Euclidean distance. The geodesic distance is computed by minimizing the length of the curves that join these two points, x and y, and remain inside, inside the set u. So that's, that's how we control the geodesic distance. And it is clear that we, we impose this uh, hypothesis in order to be able to control in all the set the length of the graph completions. Once we can do that, we can prove existence of graph completions. If we prove existence of graph completions, we can prove existence of BV simple limit solutions. And finally, if we have uh, an initial value and U is absolutely continuous and B is in L1, and the solution is uh, absolutely continuous, then Every B, then, I'm sorry, if X is a BV simple limit solution that is absolutely continuous, then it is a characteristic solution. So that is a consistency. So I, some application of these limit solutions that we consider optimal control problems associated to this kind of equations. So uh, let's say we, I'm work, in this slide and we'll work with reachable sets. So if we have, uh, a reachable set will be defined. Are the final points okay? Where well, uh, x is a solution in this case uh, is a characteristic solution. X is a solution of the equation associated to u, and x zero is given. And zero is sorry given and is. Solution. Okay, and the same we define R, the same as before, but here X is a limit solution. So, when we consider a problem, an optimal control problem, uh, where there are no final constraints. It is very easy to see uh, that uh, any point here, any point in R can be approximated by a point here. It's given only by the definition of limit solution. But we can see, for example, in this example, I will go a bit quicker, that uh, in this case, there are points that are in this set R and are not in the set, uh, in the reachable set of absolutely continuous trajectories. Okay, for example, in this example. Okay, but, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we can prove that the closures, were, when there are no final constraints, the closures of the set are the same. So, in general, what we give here is uh, results on proper extensions. So, the idea is to see optimal control problems with impulsive limit solutions as limits of a normal, regular, optimal control problems. So instead we don't use the word limit, we use the word proper extension. So if we have a set and a cost function f on this set, we will say that the minimis, uh, that's, I'm sorry, that the proper extension of a minimizing, minimization problem uh, inf of uh, f in E is a new minimization problem denoted like this for which these uh, conditions are satisfied. So the idea is that there is an injective map from the smaller set to the bigger set, such that the cost coincides when we go to the bigger set, and that the solutions in this bigger set are approximable by solutions in the smaller set. We have first, we have this approx approximation property, and then we have that the infimum coincide, okay? So, when there is no final constraints, it is, and we consider the problem P with the limit solutions, this is the set of limit solutions, and the problem PAC with classical characteristic solutions, it is very easy to see that P is a proper extension of 
PAC, okay? And this is the definition. For every limit solution that exists as, uh, and associated to UV, there exists a sequence of controls and characteristic solutions such that they are approx they approximate in the topology of L1 and the infimum coincide. As a consequence, we have that the closures of the ritual sets are the same. So when the problem has final constraints, we need uh, to give a sufficient condition to this theorem to hold, because it doesn't hold every time. So we define PC and PCAC as the extensions with the final constraints of the last problems. We have here, uh, I will go quickly, I have four minutes, I think. The idea here, we take a system with a final cost and a final constraint. We can see that if we put an input u that is absolutely continuous, then the final value is always greater or equal, or equal that one. So the value of the regular problem with final constraints is always, always greater or equal than one. On the other hand, if we allow the control to be discontinuous and we, con we consider this control, the final value is zero. So there is a gap, a positive gap between the values. So we want to remove this uh, behavior. So this is the problem, we, the, the result we gave with uh, Monica and Franco. So we have to assume, we have to do two assumptions. The first one is viability. What is said here is that there is a time for which there exists in any point that we are around the target, there is a control that allows, uh, I'm sorry, once we are inside the target, there is a time and a control that allows us to stay in the target. Okay, this does viability, that we can stay for a while in the target. And we need the quick one controllability condition that is written here, that geometrically what it says is that around the target in this neighborhood, there is always one, uh, one vector field of the impulsive part of the equation that points towards the target. So, uh, this will allow, to, allow us to get to the target and the first condition will allow us to stay in the target. So under these conditions, PC, that the, pro the problem with constraints, is a proper extension of PCAC. Okay, so idea of the proof, the idea is that we approximate by limit solutions, okay, but the approximate limit solutions maybe do not respect the final constraints, okay. So the idea is, uh, of a proper extension is that the approximating regular solution have to respect the final constraint to be feasible solutions of the problem with final constraints and absolutely continuous trajectories. So normally, when we approximate by the, by the definition of limit solutions, we do not respect the constraints, so we are outside the target S, but we use first the controllability, this blue part, the controllability to get to the target, and then we use the viability to stay in the target until time t and obtain an entire trajectory defined on zero t. Okay, so that's all. As I said before, the concept of limit solutions subsume former concept of solutions. So the limit solutions naturally provide a proper extension of standard optimal control problems with no final constraints, where no constraints are considered, but when constraints are considered, we gave uh, a sufficient conditions to the problem with limit solutions provide a proper extension. That's all.